All right, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly connect your OpenAI to your Bubble IO application. So you can, you know, analyze text, you can send text, uh, get responses. And I'm just really gonna show you the proper way to actually set this up. There's a lot of different ways, but this is the best one. Guys like Gregory John, who is an official Bubble uh, ambassador, if you'd say. So let's get straight into it. So we wanna to go to the API connector here. And we're going to go add another API and we're going to call this open AI. Now I'm going to just try and explain this as beginner friendly as possible because I know when I was first developing in bubble, yeah, it was really hard. Some people would use different terminology and so on and so forth. So I'll keep, uh, keep it, you know, as basic as possible and explain why I'm doing it all. So this is the name of the call open AI. Typically you'd name this the service or, you know, whatever you're trying to connect to. And the authentication here, we have different things. So we have a private key in the URL. So in different documentation, it may require different things to uh, successfully allow you to connect with the, uh, the application or service. So we have different options here. We have the private key in the URL, in the header, and, a ba and a basically a bunch of different ones. So we have a OAuth2 user agent flow here. And if you've ever connected to, you know, something like Google, they bring you to that separate page and it will say Google wants to allow these services to sign in. That's an OAuth2 user agent flow. But for the uh, OpenAI documentation, we're gonna be using a private key in the header here. Now with this open, let's open a new tab here and we're gonna to go to the open AI documentation. And we're gonna press that. And you're gonna to wanna to go and log in and make an account if you haven't. I'll quickly log into mine now. Um, yeah, you need a credit card on file here guys, which is the only um, the only issue. So. Go ahead and sign that up. It'll be very cheap, but you just need to uh, do it to actually allow Bubble and uh, ChatGPT to talk to each other. So we have a uh, documentation here once we're signed in, and we're gonna go to the docs section here. Go one more across to the dashboard, and then we go down to the API keys, and this is our API key section here. Now this is where all of our new uh, API keys that we create per app can be created. So let's go ahead and make a new one. I'm gonna call this YouTube API. And we have a project here, you need a project, so you just make a random test project and you select that. Let me go create. And then we have this token here and you need to copy this token because it'll only be allowed, it'll only allow you to copy it one time. So you need to make sure you copy that. And basically this is just our little token, like our unique ID, if you will, if you're familiar with Bubble. Uh, and that's how, OpenAI and Bubble talk to each other and recognize that it's us or oh, us as a user using it. So I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna go into the done here. And then we're just gonna do something very simple here in the docs and we're gonna to go to text generation. And just like that, we've actually, we'll go to the API reference here, sorry guys. And we'll go to the endpoints chat and create a chat completion like this. All right, so as you see here, this is all the JSON body. And this is basically what um, is gonna talk to ChatGPT, uh, sorry, to Bubble. And that is basically how you yeah, create a chat completion with each. And what I wanna do is go to the docs. And I'm just gonna try and explain to you how we set this up. So um, what we need to do here is we have authorization and with OpenAI, you need a bearer. So you need to type in bearer and then paste in your secret key, just like that. And we're moving down the API call here and we have a shared header for all calls. We need to add a shared header here. And the header we need to add is the application JSON, just like that. And you can see actually in the call itself, we have the authorization bearer. That is basically why I put that in there. Authorization, we typed bearer with my open AI API key. All right. Now, if we move on back into the API connector, we need to type in 
application slash JSON. Sorry, content type. You need to make sure that it's case uh, sensitive here as well, guys, and make sure that everything lines up. So it's probably best to just copy and paste it, just like that, but I'll do it for video's sake. All right, so basically that's the authorization of the call. So that's our just sort of the main thing set up and how it's gonna allow us to talk to OpenAI. And now if we move down to the API call here, this is where we sort of set up the actual body of the call. So let's name this call. We'll say create chat completion like that. And we have a different option here to use as a data or an action. So the difference here is when using it as an action, it means that we need to use it in the workflow. So if we choose to use it as data, we can only view that data as it's returned. Once we make the call, we actually can't save any data or you know we can't use that in our workflow. So because we need to create a workflow here where you know once something's made in bubble, we're sending it off to uh, OpenAI and then it's returning a result that needs to be done in the workflow. So it needs to be done as an action. And also here we have the get and post. We have get, post, put, patch, delete. So get is just retrieving data. Post is what we want because we're sending data. We're posting data to OpenAI. And we have delete, put and patch. Delete, obviously deleting a workflow. So let's go post. And then back in the OpenAI documentation, we have this URL here. And that is where we are sending this JSON body to. So once you actually become aware of, you know, how to read documentation, it's actually quite simple. We have the address or well, the URL, I should say, we're sending it to. We have the headers, as you can see, the two H's here, content type application JSON, authorization bearer, and that is it for the headers. But you may be asking why I did a header up here, private key and header, um, instead of adding two headers here next to the content type. The reason is, once we have this done in the private key and header with that secret key, say we wanted to create a chat completion here, and then we wanted to do the uh, DALI, the image generation, we only need to do that once because we've got the private key in the header. If we did that on each separate call, so as you can see, share call for all headers, we would have to go in and add it all. So that just saves some time. Let's paste in that URL here. And then if we go into, if we go back into the, uh, API reference here, we go to create chat completion. As you can see, we have a message here. So from these two curly braces, let's copy, let's go back and let's paste. And then right now, I can make a call to OpenAI and we'll see what happens. But we're gonna make it dynamic because right now, if you read this call, we have the model the role is the developer, the content, so what's actually getting sent to OpenAI, and that's basically, we're telling it that it's a helpful assistant. And then the user is saying hello, and let's see what is returned. So let's hit initialize here. As you can see, we have return values of create chat completion. And we have, hello, how can I assist you today? So we basically said hello to OpenAI, and that is the response from the assistant. Hello, how can I assist you today? But obviously we want to make it dynamic because we actually don't want it just to say, hello, how can I assist you today? We need to change this. So I'm gonna hit cancel on that. Really could have saved it, but let's just click cancel. And let's just say you are a helpful assistant. Let's just hard code this in here and say, you are a helpful uh, personal trainer who will recommend recipes based off of an ingredient. Just like that. All right, now that is hard coded in there. So, how do we actually allow the user to say something dynamic that it can be translated or transcribed back to us? So, as you can see now, we have the role of the user and the content hello. So we need to highlight this word from the two quotation marks. And if you look up here in my mouse, we have use the carrots for dynamic values. And this is basically how we set dynamic values in the JSON body. So let's highlight this and let's add in two of these like that. Let's tab back in and let's just say 
uh, prompt, right? So as you can see, we have a key value pair that has now come up here. And we need to untick private, which means um, once we untick private, it means that we actually, because the user will need to change that, it's not gonna be private, otherwise it'll allow us to actually only change it once. So we need to untick private and see how we've removed the quotation marks. All that means is we need to add them in here while we make this call and Bubble will do this on the back end for us guys, but just for setting up the call, this is how you set this up properly, which is what I'm interested in showing you. Sorry. Let's just say, make me a healthy rice dish with chicken. Now let's add them quotation marks back like that. And then we can include errors in response and allow workflow actions to continue. Let's go ahead and do that, which means that any errors that have come up, it'll show us and it's just easier to digest and read and figure out. Let's press that. Now let's initialize the call. And while this talks to OpenAI, we will get a return result and it will really be just a recipe of some chicken and rice. So here we go. And we scroll down. And as you can see, we have the body ID here, the body object, which is a chat completion. We actually change all this stuff, guys, to map to the data. But it's easier to read um, if we go to show raw data down the bottom here. But I'm just trying to explain it to you. So we have the body choices list, message roles, the assistant, and the message content. Let's go to show raw data. Here we go. Certainly, here's a recipe for a healthy chicken and vegetable stir fry with white with brown rice ingredients. One cup of brown rice, everything is like that. Now let's go ahead and go save here, guys. And now our API call is set up. Let's quickly, I'll quickly show you just a very basic design on how to set this up and quickly do a workflow. All right, so let's just quickly change this to a column 1200. I'm not gonna worry about the styling one bit here, guys. Let's add in an input. So basically a user can input, let's do a multi-line input. So a user can uh, type in what recipe they want, like this. And let's just make this 200 max width, we'll center that. And then let's add in some text here underneath it. And we're just gonna store this in a custom state, guys. So on the actual recipe page we just created, let's go to this eye icon. And let's say the state is the recipe. And this is just gonna be of type text. And then this text here, we're going to insert dynamic data and we're going to say the recipes, recipe, just like that. And all we need now is a button just to trigger the workflow. Let's center that as well. And then let's just say generate recipe, like that. Let's add a bit of spacing here, guys. All right, now. Let's go onto the button here and let's actually set this up. So let's add the workflow. And we're just, we're really just gonna send something straight to them. Like we're not, we can actually do this properly guys and save the data and I've shown that in previous videos, but in this video, I was just purely focused on showing you how to set up the open AI API properly. And I will do a deep seek one as well. So let's go to the open AI create chat completion. Because remember I said that if we did this as a uh, data instead of an action, we wouldn't be able to see this in the workflow. So let's go create check completion. We have the body prompt here. Now what we want to do is insert dynamic data. And if we tick private, remember we had that private box in the workflow, this would not have come up here. It would have been private and we wouldn't have been able to actually edit it. That's why we had to untick private. And now we have done dynamic access with the body prompt. Let's insert dynamic data. And this is going to be the multi-line input A's value. And the last thing we need to do is format that as JSON safe. So it is returned to, uh, yeah, returned to OpenAI properly. And then we can allow us to get it back. So let's go to the next step here. We have now spoken to OpenAI. And now all we're going to do is set state of an element. 
and that element is going to be the recipe page. This is basically just to save that state to that custom state I made so we can reference it and just show you. This is the quickest, one of the probably not worst way, but one of the most sort of unsecure ways of doing it. So this is all for video purposes only, guys. If you want to check out how to have done it in other videos, make sure you go and watch them. So recipe. And the value is going to be the result of step one. So the result of the call to open AIs, body choices, the first items, and there we have the message content. And this will go blue and it will resolve just like that. All right, now let's go into the design here. And let's just, I'll give it a bit more space here. Let's just add 260 for me like that. And now let's preview this and let's see how we go here, guys. So. Um, can you saw it? All right, now let's just get rid of the debug mode. All right, now let's go. Let's say, make me a healthy, let's say, a healthy recipe with steak. Let's generate. As you can see, that's loading now, guys. And we should get a return recipe that is saved with the custom state. So it should pop up right down here. But we can also do everything. I've done videos and just like that. As you can see, we have a healthy recipe featuring steak ingredients for the steak, for the salad, for the vinaigrette, instructions, and everything just like that. Very simple and very easy here, guys. So yeah, that is basically how I wanted to sort of get in depth and explain a little bit more as to why that's the best way to use the API connector the way I've done it. Um, yeah, it's really beneficial, especially using the private key in header and you know using the shared headers for calls as well. It saves a lot of time on the back end. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I'll be sure to do a deep seek one as well for you guys. I know it's the new sort of craze at the moment and I'll, it's, it's good, it's cheap. And it's definitely something I'll be doing. So make sure you subscribe to the weekly newsletter. I'll leave a like comment with any video ideas. I'm um, happy to do whatever you guys want. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.